Interesting enough, this past week I was actually working on a project up in Rhode Island and a lot like this particular facility that we're at here, uh, most people go online and what they're doing is they are looking at opportunities and they're wanting to respond to RFPs and bids immediately. Uh, the particular project that I was bidding, uh, we actually started looking at that project back in September of 2020. So a year ago, we started looking at that project, digging into what the requirements were, res responding to a source of SOP. Uh, my team put together multiple packages that we submitted uh, with all of our past performance, all of our history, everything um, to pre-qualify us for this particular IDIQ MAC five-year contract. Now, uh, it's a MAC, meaning multiple award construction contract, IDIQ, indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity vehicle. So it's a five-year, $249 million project. Ultimately, it's not five years or $249 million. Specifically for me, they're going to pick five winners. But the point is that we started doing our due diligence a year ago. I was tracking it. We've had four meetings where I flew up to Rhode Island. We met with my teams, we met with our attorneys, we met with our subcontractors. We looked at what the requirements were. And then when it came out a few months ago, we were already prepared. We already had knowledge of it. We already knew um, what was the, the customer's needs. Uh, between the time where we put together the source of saw and the time when RP came out, we were working on that military installation. We were working on that naval base. We were already knew the contracting officer. We already knew the janitors. We knew the pro project manager. We knew the clients. We knew the building. We knew the company that worked at the building before us. We knew the designer of record. We knew the architect. So, and that's for the seed project. So we had all of this in intelligence that we had accumulated over that one year period of time that oftentimes you who are just looking on a computer for the very first time, you don't have that type of information, right? Because you failed to do your due diligence, you failed to do your homework, or you didn't allow yourself enough time in order to do that. So I like to say to folks is that you're competing against people like me out there. You're competing against people like me who put together a monstrous team in fact, I'm just coming off of putting together a package for another five-year, $200 million IDIQ out in Tobihana. And so we already had the luxury of our team working together. We had the luxury of putting together a package that was probably, I don't know, 400 pages. Um, we already had the luxury of having our CPARS rating, our PPQs. See, these are things that if you don't even know what I'm saying, you're far behind and you need to continue learning, continue further your education and you probably need to invest in a program or a person to help you with that. Going back to the IDIQ, having our CPARs, having our PPQs, having put together packages, having our proposal writer, uh, when we meet on our Teams calls, which for most people are Zoom calls, we're meeting eight, nine people deep. And so we have an entire proposal team. We've got our financial manager. We have, um, we actually divvy up the work between five different people who are actually writing various components of that project. So I, I just want to caution everyone out there who thinks that you can jump into this and immediately start tackling or taking on contractors like myself and companies like myself um, when you don't have the presence of mind to actually invest in learning, researching, studying the market, studying customer. Under thing, understanding all aspects of that particular opportunity. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is that in one of my earlier videos we discussed uh, bid, no bid checklists. And so that's something that we give out to all of our students who take our, our courses and our platform is a bid, no bid checklist which helps you to determine whether or not you should respond to that bid. Meaning that there's probably 12 or 15 items on that list that says helps you make a determination of what we call go, no go. And you should be discussing internally amongst your, the people that are in your group and your alliances of a go, no go strategy for your team. If you don't have that, um, definitely you want to work with someone who does have access to something very similar in nature and or reach out to someone from our organization so that we can help you get to the point where you decide because time is money and we all have a very finite amount of time and a finite amount of money which is a finite amount of resources. So again, I hope that to share or shed light on kind of the process that we go through, the things that we do and how we actually go about deciding whether we want to pursue this opportunity. Um, 
Something else I forgot to mention was that we knew all of the competitors. We know their strengths, we know their weaknesses. We were guessing their names before we even got there. We, we knew five out of the six people that showed up, the companies, because of the size, the scope, and the capability of the project, we knew the people who were qualified to do this. So again, having the presence of mind, um, if one of our competitors actually responds to this, we know where their deficiencies are, and if we decide, we can actually f initiate a protest that we have a 90% chance of winning because of their deficiencies. So keep that in mind, I just want to share that and, and let everyone know out there kind of the process that I go through and what's all involved in putting together a MAC contract or an IDIQ. Thanks, if you like the video, make sure you subscribe, hit the thumbs up, because again, we want the social media guys to keep pushing our content.